This video describes the nature and composition of sound. By dissecting the sounds we hear into their component parts, we hope to illuminate some of the more subtle aspects of what we hear in everyday life. Below me is a spectrogram generated by Audacity, a free open source audio editor. A spectrogram is a graph of frequency versus time where the volume or amplitude of each sound wave is represented by its coloration. As I'm speaking, you can see that each word is not made up of a single frequency, but that there are a multitude of frequencies producing their own volume. Each of these component frequencies contribute to the overall sound of my voice. And this is true for every sound we hear. For example, when I play the low E string on this guitar, we'll see that there are many individual frequencies produced by this single note. Each of these frequencies are called simple waves, the fundamental building blocks of sound. When these simple waves combine, they add together to form a complex wave. Using Audacity, we can isolate each different frequency to see each simple wave. Let's listen to the low E again. And now each component frequency. The reason that these sound so different from the original recording is that each one of these sounds is actually a simple wave. If we focus on the fundamental frequency, or lowest pitch, and look at its waveform, we can see that it is a sinusoidal wave. It has an amplitude and a period, which is the length of time it takes the wave to complete one cycle. Let's listen to that. In order to measure the frequency of this wave, we must first find its period. This turns out to be a little more than one one hundredth of a second. By finding out how many times the period fits into one second, we can calculate its frequency. This is roughly 83 hertz. We can verify our calculation easily by looking at the spectrogram. Now let's look at the next highest pitch. Alone, it sounds like this. If we compare the waveform for this note and the waveform from the fundamental, a few things become noticeable. First, it has more amplitude, meaning that it has more volume relative to the fundamental. Second, it goes through twice as many cycles as the fundamental in the same length of time. From this, it is easy to infer that its frequency should be twice that of the fundamental frequency. If we look on the spectrogram, we can read this frequency as being right around 167 hertz, double the fundamental. If we look at the third frequency in the series, which sounds like... We see that it goes through three times as many cycles as the fundamental. This means that it has three times the frequency as the fundamental. The fundamental was 83.3 hertz, Multiplying by 3 gives 250 hertz, and there we see it on the spectrogram. The last thing to notice is that this waveform is slightly out of phase with the two waves above it, meaning that their starting points are not aligned exactly. For the fourth frequency, we notice that it has four times as many periods as the fundamental, giving a frequency of 333.3 hertz. For the fifth frequency, it is five times the fundamental. So now a pattern is emerging. Each frequency is just a multiple of the fundamental. But what happens if we start adding waves together? Remember, any combination of simple waves is a complex wave. The sum of the first two waves looks like this. Now we can add in the third. And the fourth. And finally the fifth. So 
So this is starting to sound more like the original guitar note. Let's listen to that again and compare. First the original. Now let's compare the waveform made with the first five frequencies to the actual waveform of the E string. You can see our constructed waveform begin to take on some similarities to the original. Although we did not include all of the frequencies in our reconstruction of the E string, we find that the upper frequencies become so quiet that they have little effect on the overall sum. The waveforms on the left hand side of the screen represent the first five frequencies in the overtone series on a guitar. All stringed instruments will exhibit the same pattern of frequencies in their overtone series. However, each instrument will produce waves with unique volume and phase anomalies so that no two guitars sound exactly alike. To explore this notion further, please view our next video about the overtone series in timbre.